ano po, from the um, Strategy Management Division of the Office for Strategic Studies and Strategy Management. And I am handling um, and managing the training workshops related to strategy management or, in re or anything related to the AFP transformation roadmap. Um, the Western Command is undergoing or will be undergoing the EFP triple certification. So for my first discussion, po, um, I'll be focusing more on the strategy, strategy execution management process. Again, um, at this point, I hope um, and I know some of you have um, are familiar with the scorecard, Westcom scorecard, and so personal scorecard at least. So we'll start with the strategy execution management process because this is the this is the process that governs the management of the of your transformation roadmap and the whole transformation roadmap of the armed forces. So again, as part of the um, advocacy of the uh, OSGSM, even before way back 2014, is to make sure that we are process driven. So every time that we give lecture, we give training to um, units and offices, we always go back to the strategy execution management process so that we'll be able to understand the bigger picture, ano yung buong proseso, ng kabu yung kabuoan na proseso ng pagmamanage ng transformation roadmap or pagmamanage ng scorecard ninyo na lagi ninyo nakikita, na paulit-ulit na dinidiscuss sa inyo ng Western Command. Okay, yeah, and so for um, the learning objective, again, at the end of this presentation, um, participants, I hope that you will be able to understand the strategy execution management process framework. We will be discussing the framework and um, I will try my best to discuss it as much as possible um, in layman's term and in a way na maiintindihan po ng bawat isa and nakaka-relate kayo. And Second is to identify the design, designated TAFPTR personnel, the um, various committee involved, and their function. Okay. So it's, aside from understanding the process, it is also um, best for us to know who are the personnel, the the personnel, the the personnel directly involved in your unit in the implementation of your transformation roadmap para alam natin kung sino kung kanino tayo lalapit kung sino yung mga accountable for all these functions as well as um paano natin sila paano nila kayo matutulungan lalo na doon sa iba nating mga personnel and if you are part of this personnel what are expected from you in the organic um um by the OSC system as well as by I uh, through this policy. Okay, so again, for the um, um for the FEMP as we call it, as we call it short stem, it is basically a process framework for framework for the management of the execution of the strategy. Again, with the um FEMP, we laid down a process wherein kapag tinignan ng personnel of the personnel of AFP and those who are involved in the implementation of your respective transformation role, may intindihan nila kung anong proseso. Okay, we always go back to the process. And it is actually composed of series of sub-processes, each serving as a mechanism. So at the end of this lecture, may intindihan ninyo, ah, kaya pala kami pinapal kaya pala kami ni require ng um GSMO na mag-submit kaya pala namin to ginagawa kasi it's all part of the process okay yung bawat papel na pinapasa ninyo sa na um, related to transformation roadmap or sa certification ninyo or sa AFP trip ninyo all form part doon sa buong proseso para ma-implement ninyo ng maayos yung transformation roadmap ninyo so, ganun siya ka-critical. Hindi lang kayo basta pinapapasa ng process because these documents reflect if you are doing or if you are following the process. 
yun po yung gusto namin i-impress. Okay? So, with the ASP trip na lagi ninyo naririnig, it is our tool to check if you are doing the SEMP or if you are following the SEMP. Okay? Because at the end of the day, the main purpose of the SEMP is to institutionalize yung different processes um, in order to ensure the proper management of the AFPTR. Again and again, hindi tayo forever na nasa AFP, but the AFPTR, the vision of the AFPTR as well as the um, processes involved ay mananatili even we go out of the organization. That's why we made this policy and we made we are making sure that you are following this policy. Okay po? So this is basically the SEMP. Um, I-discuss ko po sa inyo yung framework for strategy execution management. But before that, I want to discuss first yung mga scorecards na naririnig ninyo because it's um, best for us to understand ano-ano ba yung mga scorecard diba, na involved dito sa strategy execution management process. Okay. May tatlong scorecard kayo na laging naririnig. Okay. And these scorecards are focusing and um, they're directing to different levels. Ayun yung gusto kong um, sabihin mo na. First scorecard, the strategic level scorecard is what we call the Chief of Staff AFP Performance Scorecard. CSAFP Performance Scorecard. So when someone asks you, kamusta yung, kamusta ba scorecard? Ano meron sa scorecard? So the first question should be, anong scorecard po ba? Because may mga iba't ibang scorecard. Okay? First is the CSAFP performance scorecard and ayun yung sa level ng chief of staff or the AFP level, organization level. Na nandoon nakalagay yung organization goals ng armed forces. Meron tayong scorecard. So kung 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 isa kang kumpanya, merong kung merong um kumpanya for example um San Miguel. Kung may scorecard ng San, San Miguel, yung buong buong corporation nila may scorecard. It's the same with us. Okay? The second kind of level ng scorecard natin is the lower scorecard, the subsidiary scorecard, lower unit scorecard or the subsidiary scorecard, which are the unit and office scorecards of different units and levels. Kung hahatiin mo yon, may iba't iba pa siyang parang um, um, category, which is the horizontal and the vertical. Pero, in essence, merong second level, yung lower level natin or the subsidiary, do which doon pumapasok si Westcom scorecard. Okay? And the last level that we have is the personal scorecard, which is your individual scorecard. So kapag sinabing scorecard lang, maraming level. Okay? So you have to understand first, ano yung pinag-uusapang scorecard para alam mo din kung saan nakafocus yung scorecard na yun. Okay? When we talk about personal, it's all about yourself. It's all, all about your alignment to the organization and for your personal development. That's clear. But with SEMP, what we are focusing here is both for the um, CSAFP performance scorecard and your scorecard, your unit scorecard, which is the Westcom scorecard. Okay? So, ano po ba ang meron sa strategy execution management process? Again, this is the process for the scorecard or for the management of your scorecard or the whole transformation roadmap of, um, of Westcom and of the armed forces. So, we have here different sub-processes. Diba sabi kanina, may iba't ibang sub-processes sa SEMP and these are these sub-processes. And for the AFP level, this is the process that must be followed para masabing na ma-manage ng maigi ang transformation roadmap ng armed forces. Okay? So, ito yung ginagawa for the CSAFP scorecard. Okay? I hope that's clear. And later on, after the scorecard cascading, 
ito naman din, almost same process that we are doing here sa general headquarters are expected for units and offices na gawin din nila and i-follow nila. Kaya dyan sa pasok yung lower unit office scorecard. So this is the same process that you have to follow. Okay? But see, yung that encompasses all this um, process which is the strategic communication. So I hope that's clear. So bakit scorecard cascading kayo papasok? Because again, dapat mauna dito sa taas para i-cascade sa inyo. Okay? So magandang makita na sa AFP level, paano ba nagko-contribute si Westcom? Ano ba yung role ni Westcom? Ano yung contribution niya sa organizational goal na nilatag na armed forces? Okay? Dito yun sa taas, ikakaskade sa inyo, which means i-disseminate sa inyo, and that's the time for you to make your own scorecard. Okay? So, I hope clear po yun. Sa lahat na again, this is the whole SEMP and compassing or outlining the processes for the AFP scorecard and for the lower level scorecard. Okay. So, ano po ba yung expected from you or ano po ba yung dapat sinusunod na proseso when managing the scorecard? Okay. So, we, we will be focusing on the subsidiary scorecard development. Okay. So, nakagawa na ng scorecard si AFP. And the main task now of every unit and office of general headquarters is to make their unit or office scorecard. So, basta po napunta kayo sa any office ng general headquarters ng program 4, meron at meron yung scorecard. Okay? So, sabi nga kanina, way of life because may isang kanang unit mapunta ngayon, maririnig mo si scorecard. Yun nga lang, kung sa kayunit na na-assign, yun, meron silang corresponding scorecard ka nang maaabutan. For sure, sa mga bagong na-assign sa Westcom, may mga naabutan na kayong scorecard ng Westcom. Okay? Because you have the personnel before you have developed your unit scorecard. Na siyempre, pinasa-tasa lang yan. Kasi, nandyan yan eh. Diba? So, I, I, we hope that with the process, even by faster and over time ng personnel, um, institutionalized yung process. Okay? So the first task of every unit and office of the program for is to make their scorecard, unit and office scorecard. Okay? And then, they have to make sure na na-validate and na-approve ang scorecard. So yun ako, kikita niyo pong scorecard dyan, mga nakapaskel dyan sa unit ninyo. Hindi ni disseminate ng GSMO. Hindi lang po yan, oof, biglang nagkaroon ng scorecard ang Westcom. Hindi po. Dumaan po dapat yan sa tedious process of validation and approval. Okay? Because kung ano yung nasa scorecard ninyo, ayun ay yung ililink ninyo sa budget. And once na ililink ninyo sa budget, Ano po bang expected kapag nilink sa budget? Kailangan ninyong i-implement. And when implementation comes in, all of you are involved. Kasi lahat kayo na part ng, well, ng Westcom are expected to implement that. Kung nasa OU3 ka, OU4 ka, kapag nandun sa scorecard yan ng Westcom, accountable ang buong OU4, OU5, or OU3. Or sino pang mga nandoon sa sa na owner doon sa Westcom scorecard. So kapag nakita ninyo yung scorecard ni Westcom at nakita ninyo na nandoon yung opisina ninyo, ibig sabihin directly impacting kayo doon sa Westcom scorecard. Okay? So mga at the top of our head mga nandiyan yung mga youth staff. So kung part ka ng OU1 and nakita doon na may target si OU1, si OU3 when it comes to the JRRS those units are accountable not only to OJ10 or to your respective OFM, but also to OSSSM. Okay? So, kasi nililink siya sa budget. Kaya nga po, lagi namin sinasabi, when you develop your scorecard, we always say this and emphasize it, make sure 
na validated and approved ni Commander ang scorecard. We don't publish outdated scorecard and we don't disseminate outdated scorecard. We implement and we make sure that the scorecard that we have now is the updated scorecard and approved yan ni Commander. Why? Because i-implement ninyo yan eh. Diba? Ipaililink yan sa APB ninyo later on. So, yung mga programang yan, dapat nakita ni Commander. Okay. And na-approve niya. And once na-approve niya, maling sa budget, i-implement and i-monitor. Okay. Kaya gusto lagi namin sinasabi din na we don't just look at the scorecard na tapos na siya kapag nasa papel lang o nagawa na na yung scorecard. No. Because in a month, yun in a quarterly basis, kailangan minomonitor ninyo yan, minimake sure ninyo what you have written in that scorecard or what's written in that scorecard are being implemented. Okay? Because later on, imamanage nyo yan and you will do reports to the OSSSM and to your head of office. Okay? Ninamanage ninyo and nire-report ninyo yan. So even without us really going every time dyan sa Westcom, checking if na-implement ninyo, but with this process and with the AFP3 na nag-check um, periodically sa mga units and offices, we'll be able to know if you are doing it or not. Okay? So ganun ka-important yung AFP3 in the whole process of institutionalizing the process of SEF. Okay. And you are also expected to do program review, program review, strategy review. Okay. So yung scorecard in implement mo, nire require din namin na i-review ninyo. That's why the GSMO, sabi niya ga, ba? Usually, kapag sobrang nagkakaskade or sila, required sila mag-conduct ng review, kapatawag yung mga representative sa you staff. Because based sa process, kailangan talaga mag-conduct ng review ang bawat units and offices. So why? Because the programs review and strategy review, this is the process, part and process that will ensure that your scorecards are being implemented, nagkakaroon ng accountability dun sa mga dapat mag-implement, and at the same time, programs review and strategy review ensures na responsive pa and relevant pa yung scorecard ninyo. Diba? Kasi once na nagpo-programs review kayo, for example, si OU3, nakita nyo yung mga nandun, nasasabi ni OU3 kung anong problem. Naa-attain ba namin yan? May problem kami? Parang ganyan. Because whatever is laid down in the scorecard, mga nakalagay dun sa scorecard, kaya siya binavalidate. Because naniniwala na kung ano yung nakalagay sa scorecard are the strategic goals ng Westcom. Which means sa dami-dami ng ginagawa ng opisina, ito yung pinakamahalagang kailangan gawin ng opisina para matransform yung unit namin. Dapat ganun yung mindset when we look at the scorecard. Because it, the scorecard should bridge kung ano yung dating Westcom sa bagong Westcom na gusto niya ma-attain in the future. Okay, ganun dapat yung mindset when you see the, when you see your scorecard. Kaya kapag nakita nyo yun, dapat alam ninyo na tama yung mga nandun. Ayun yung kailangan ninyong i-insure muna. Tama yung nandun, nag-a-agree yung bawat staff sa nakasulat doon kasi i-implement nyo later on. We don't want to implement something, di ba po, na hindi tayo nag-a-agree with totally. And hindi natin alam, hindi tayo nagkakaroon ng consensus sa kung ano ba dapat yung mahalaga o ano ba dapat yung strategic goal ng Westcom. Okay. So, yun po yung mga kailangan gawin. Okay po. Yan. So, office or unit head reporting. So, kung nag-programs review kayo, again, part ng form niyan, si Pirma si Westcom. Si Comwestcom. So, kapag pumirma si kung Westcom, tapos nakita yung scorecard niya, nakita yung scorecard niya, may mga pula doon, may mga hindi natin, bakit? di ba? So, nandun din dapat, doon mo rin makikita yung commitment ng top leadership. Kaya sa buong AFP trip journey, sa buong transformation roadmap, we also highlight the importance 
of commitment of top leadership. And some most of the time, yung um, yung flow ng process ng SEMP sa units and offices. Sometimes it also reflects yung um, kung ano yung impact ng commitment ng top leadership nila. Because meron at merong impact yun. Kung may MSGC kayo, you also report. So sa case ng Westcom, may MSGC kayo or multi-sector governance council. So you are not only accountable internally, but you are also accountable externally to your external stakeholders, which are your MSGC, which is your MSGC. And after any guidance ng MSGC, at, at, this, at, at the end of the day, kung anong mga um nasa scorecard ng unit ninyo lahat naman yon are all recommendatory and papasok sa head natin or sa commander ninyo and siya mag issue ng guidance if it's all good and also um all good for implementation yan and if may mga changes kayo necessary na kailangan doon i yeah, update niyo si scorecard okay so that's the ano po. That's the process okay, of the whole scorecard. So kaya po, pag nagtatanong, Miss May, uh, pwede ba mabago yung scorecard? Kapag tinignan niyo itong process na to, ang sagot kagod sa inyo ay yes. Okay. Pwede po bang mabago yung parts ng scorecard? Yes. Because itong bawat process na to, ay meron din naman yung kanyang-kanyang guidelines. So for program review and strategy review, how do you conduct review of your scorecard and how do you um, update it? Okay, ano yung tamang proseso sa pag a update ng scorecard? Because may mga score, may mga kailangan din tayong, um, may mga kailangan proseso ng pagdaanan para ma-update si scorecard. Hindi lang yung bas basta natin siyang nababago. Kasi may baguhin ka sa scorecard impacting yun sa lahat. Okay? Kaya kailangan ang safeguard mo doon, ang safety net mo for that ay approve ni commander. Kasi kapag nagkaroon ng checking and tinignan, sinrace, saan nagbago, sino nagsabing baguhin, diba? if you go back to the process, Si commander po, uh, ni-recommend ng, ng, ng technical works group and so on. Okay po, so as um, OSCSM, we always cascade this to the GSMO para alam din nila yung process. Okay, and for those na hindi part ng GSMO but part of the technical working group and yung other AFPTR personnel, for you to have a glimpse na um, ito pala yung proseso na sinasala ng GSMO. Okay. So for the next part of this um, short presentation is the designation, compositions, and any mga functions ng mga key AFPTR personnel. So if you are part of this um, um, group, okay po, uh, part kayo nitong mga committee nito, kayo yung mga AFPTR personnel, the so-called AFPTR personnel, magkaharong kayo ng idea what are expected from you based on this SOP. So let's start with the designate uh, with the unit and GSMO. So when we say unit and GSMO, selected lang po ang mga units na may GSMO. And ito lang po yung mga units na yun na nakikita ninyo dito. So kung pumunta ka kunyari sa uh, na-assign po kayo for example sa Aside po dito, ah, uh, uni unified command po ay automatic yun na may GSMO. Uh, kunyari na-assign kayo sa unit na walang GSMO, sa office na walang GSMO, for sure, walang GSMO kayo doon may kita. Pero kung na-assign kayo sa PMA, sa Presscom, sa Health Service Command, may GSMO yung mga yun. Or again, for the unified command, may GSMO yun. Okay. So, again, Yung GSMO, um, considered siya as the function of the staff, which is closely related to performance and governance. 
and yung commander should um, consider yung scrap and build policy. And ito po yung common question. So GSMO, um, dahil may ano tayo, may policy about the scrap and build, yung unit nila makakapagsabi kung makakapag-establish kayo ng separate GSMO for your unit. Okay? May mga unit tayo na may separate talaga silang GSMO. But there are units na kinakabit siya sa OU5. So, kinakabit siya sa OU5 because they think na pinaka-close yung ginagawa, again, ng U5 to performance and governance and stuff. So, since planning, nagpa-plan, and gano'n. So, yung U5, kinakabit nila sa OU5. Okay? Meron namang iba, may separate OU5, may separate GSMO. Pwede rin po yun. But, again, nasa discretion yun ng unit ninyo, unit commander ninyo, kung kaya ba na gawin yun. Pero kung hindi, wala po tayo magagawa, but to make sure na yung OU5 ninyo is doing or is doing the function of a GSMO. So in your case po ata, hindi separate, so OU5 is also handling the, the uh, GSMO function. And right now, we are in the process of reviewing it, syempre, with all the audits din po na nagawa namin before, considering na yung uh, tignan ulit, yun na mag, um, yung possibility to work with OJ3 for the approval, yung organis, syempre, organizational structure po ito, parang ganun. Um, dumaan ulit sa review and makapag um, matignan ng OSSSM. Yung um, GSMO with um, na nakakabit with OU5 and having a separate GSMO. Okay? Kung paano po iaano ang GSMO in the organizational structure ng mga unit na required magtayo. Okay po. So, nare-raise naman po yun ang na-concern ng iba. Yan. So, but for the meantime, kung magkakabit yung GSMO and U5 ninyo, again, ang function nito, it's a replicate of OSM. Because this unit po, usually yung unit na makikita ninyo yung GSMO, ito yung mga malalaking unit. Ay, yung may mga staff and may mga lower unit, operational units na nasa kan nakabit sa kanila. Masyadong malaki. Diba po? So, required na magkaroon ng OSM because OSM wouldn't be able to go down doon sa mga level nila because this unit have their own peculiarity and wide in scope. Malalaki talaga ito in scope. Kaya po namin sinap or um, nilagay na kailangan magtayo ng parang replicate OSM sa mga units na to. Okay? So what the GSMO are doing sa office, sa unit ninyo is also basically what we are doing sa OSSM in a different level lang po. Okay? Kasi sa amin, AFP level yung tinitignan namin. Sa inyo, yung GSMO ninyo, WESCOM level lang. Okay? So, kinocontextualize ng GSMO yung mechanism and tools na dinidevelop ng OSSM because we, kung whatever policies that we have, ano yung mga tools and mechanisms that we have, ang first na pagbababaan namin yan, kung may GSMO ka, ay GSMO. And sila rin magsasabi ng sila rin magko-contextualize nun sa unit ninyo. So they also act as the secretariat of the unit and unit technical working group for strategy management. So what, um, pag may mga meetings in technical working group, sila yung secretariat, automatic yun. They also submit performance monitoring or as required um, by the OSSSM and they report directly to your commanders. So yung GSMO, whatever it is ng mga reports na kailangan niya, mga ginagawa niya based on the performance, monitoring ng performance, direct yung, direct yung reporting niya kay Westcom or sa inyo po kay ComWestcom. Okay? So that's how it works. The next group of, group of people na um, critical then with the implementation of the transformation roadmap is the TR technical working group. So, na-inform ako that part, mga yung mga attendees ngayon are from or members of that technical working group. So, again, if you are coming, if your unit ay may GSMO, 
usually composed of coordinating staff, automatic yun, mga, uh, yung staff ninyo. If you have AG, uh, or, uh, parang IG in your ano, MFO or OFM right now and the internet audit shared by your respective unit chief of staff. So, in design. Design nun. So, question, pwede pa po ba kami mag-add ng ibang office na feeling namin mahalagan maging part ng technical working group? Yes. Ang nire-require lang naman po namin dun ay appropriate orders. Okay? So, if you need to add. But we have to make sure na um, we have to make sure na kung sino lang talaga yung directly involved doon sa managing and um, doon sa scorecard sa buong implementation ng question roadmap, sila yung part ng technical working group. Okay? Because the technical working group ensures the finalization of the unit scorecard. Ganon ka important ang technical working group. Okay, because sabi ko nga kanina, binavalidate, di ba po? So, sila ang validation committee for the scorecard. Kaya kung may change sa scorecard, may kailangan baguhin sa scorecard, dinadaan sa technical working group. Because um, technical working group, sila yung recommendatory body. Dapat sila yung nag-check muna. Kaya nga, represented ang bawat staff. Okay, so kunyari, nag-meeting, ganito po kahalagang technical working group, nag-program review, strategy review, annual review, may kailangan baguhin siya scorecard. And for example, si OU3 hindi umatend or walang representative at all, and may kailangan baguhin siya scorecard. And common scenario na nangyayari, walang representative, yung isang staff, and then na-approve because majority voted for it. and uh, may resolution for that na magbabago. Nakita ang updated scorecard. May ang updated scorecard and then may comment si OU3 for example. May gusto ulit baguhin si OU3 kasi hindi siya dumaan. But again, when you look at the process, duman siya ng proseso kasi duman sa technical working group. That's why we always say as much as possible, whoever attend the technical working group and alam ninyong crucial yung agenda for that technical working group as much as possible um, magpadala tayo yung makakaprovide ng input kung hindi available si si you staff yung um, magpadala tayo ng someone who can provide substantial inputs doon whoever it is whatever designation that person is as long as capable siya magbigay ng um, substantial inputs during the meeting, okay po yun. Okay? Ganun ka important ang bawat technical working group meeting. That's why in a conduct ng review, yan, finalization is scorecard, validation is scorecard, sila yung po meeting. Because kung titignan, kung you staff ka, alam mo dapat kung anong mga naandaan sa scorecard. Alam ninyo kung ano dapat um, yung mahahalaga, yung goals ng... Um, Westcom. Para kapag na-publish siya, recommend and kunyari for example, magtanong si Comwestcom, bakit ito yung nakalagay sa scorecard? Alam ninyo, ano yung sasagot kay Comwestcom at sa recommendatory body? Diba? Ganito po sir, kasi ganito po yung napag-usapan dyan. Okay? So, oversight committee sila sa buong implementation. So, aside from the scorecard itself, Anything na, for example, may kailangan baguhin or kailangan pag-decidean um, specifically on the improvement on the implementation and transformation roadmap ng Westcom, sila din ang tinatap. Okay? Like what I've mentioned, periodic review, sila talaga ang nakaupo doon. Because sila yung nagsabi na implement ito, ito yung mga um, ni-recommend before, sila din yung magkahanak ng review. Because during the review, doon nagiging accountable ang bawat staff na nakalagay na dapat mag-implement nun. So, kung OU4 naman, for example, for, for the um, equipment readiness, parang ganyan. So, during during review, dapat um, may representative again para kung may concern yung other staff with the performance, for example, R3 lang. Bakit R3 anong problem? If may representative doon, someone can answer that, right? So, yun yung kahalagahan ng technical working group in the conduct of programs review. 
they get to understand bakit ayun ang new status. Para pag tinanong, alam din nila. Ensure that they submit updates to the OSM. So, ayan, ano naman yun. Um, crucial then for uh, sa, sa, sa case nila. Okay? Kaya kung part ng technical working group, um, lagi po ko yung pinapatawag ng WESCOM or nag-organize ang GSMO na mga meetings because of this process. These are the things that are expected from you and mad kailangan ma-deliver based on the process. Ganyan. Kaya nga po sinasabi namin when you conduct technical working group meeting as much as possible, make it short, concise, yung pinag-uusapan straightforward para konti lang yung time na magagamit because we know how busy we are in our office or in our unit and maraming ginagawa. Okay. Pero gusto namin, ayaw, ang, gusto, ang gusto namin ay hindi makaligtaan kung ano yung kailangan gawin natin sa transformation roadmap or with the scorecard. Okay. And next, itong scorecard action officer, hindi ko na po i-discuss kasi hindi naman siya applicable sa inyo because you have your GSMO. Automatic si Chief GSMO, yung pinaka-action officer ninyo. For the Guild of Civilian HR, yan. so before, hindi pa siya applicable. But right now, with the um, memorandum na mga na-issue, yan, um, lahat ng units and office ng program for may designated Guild of Civilian HR. So, if merong, if there's um Guild of Civilian HR is listening or nandiyan sa office ninyo, yan, so, siyang civilian uh, point of contact to ensure the continuity of the transformation roadmap ng unit. Okay, so, siya rin yung kapag wala yung um, action officer, um, yung GSMO, chief GSMO, yung una namin nilalapitan ang civilian HR. Okay? So they ensure then, they help in the gathering of data and preparation alongside will the action officer or the GSMO maintaining data files, records. Okay? The civilian AFP TR SME. Ayan. So pagdating sa civilian, dapat yung uh, Guild of Civilian HR um, siya yung unang lalapitan din pag may mga concerns. Ayan. So, alternate member. Ayan. So, pwede mag-assign ng alter, alternate member yung Guild of Civilian HR. Um, and they represent niya rin if absent yung isa. Parang yan. So, proxy. Pwede mag-assign ng proxy. Ayan. So, we, um, we have seen the uh, impact ng having uh, having guild of civilian HR. It all started first with the uh, measure owners but because we've seen kung paano sila nakatulong with the whole implementation of the scorecard of the transformation roadmap, it expand namin yung membership ng guild of civilian HR. That's why because um, na-acknowledge din namin and based din sa data na mas mat mas tumatagal yung Guild of Civilian HR ng unit or ng office as kaysa doon sa mga military personnel because military personnel, they need to be reassigned, di ba, to certain ano, un different units and offices. Parang ganyan. So, mas tumatagal sila and since mas matagal sila, they serve as a good institutional memory doon sa unit. Nalam niya rin kwento. So, kapag may bagong action officer, may bagong GSM, oh, sure, ganito po. Ganito po, ganyan, ganyan. And since may direct um, coordination sila with OSS, eh, mas mabilis kami nakukontakt. And for the MSGC, ito naman po, um, again, required sa inyo, if naririnig nyo ninyo MSGC, Basically, they are, they are a group of people, experts in different fields, representing different sectors of the society, na vital for WESCOM. Again, tinutulungan nila tayo. Ayan. So for those who are not yet aware of the multi-sector governance concept, because the MSGC usually, ang nakakasalamuha lang naman ito ay yung WESCOM, mga top leadership ng WESCOM, as well as the technical working group, and yung uh, um, 
other stakeholders din, yun lang usual. So, yung iba, hindi sila sobrang familiar with the MS, na merong MSGC. Not unless they are part or they've been part of any of their initiatives. Kasi may mga initiatives din na ini-sponsor ang, or in partnership with the MSGC of Westcom. Yeah. So as um to end yung ano to end yung uh, first lecture for today again so kanina na sabi ko ng proseso na sabi ko sino yung mga tao na crucial for the whole implementation of the transformation roadmap tama po ba now let's go with the scorecard management in terms of the timeline okay so ano ba yung na expect na gawin or um gawin or ginagawa dapat Diba? in terms na kapag nilatag natin siya in a monthly basis or in a quarterly basis. Okay? So, at the start of uh, at the start of the year, usually nagkaharoon ng annual strategy review and na-update yung scorecard when you do the, the review. So, for the whole year, nagkaharoon, kailangan i-implement na ninyo yung scorecard. Okay? So, di ba po, kung babalikan ninyo, so I hope may nakapaskill yung scorecard, may mga targets yan kada taon. And then yung kailangan ninyo i-implement for the whole year. With the assumption na kung ano yung nakalagay dyan are updated based on the conduct of reviews. Okay? Kasi nagbabago, pwedeng magbago siya kapag nire-review yung scorecard ng technical working group. Ayan. So, you are expected to implement full year your scorecard. And you are expected to do programs review based on that process. Okay, so the GSMO will have to conduct monthly programs review regularly for 12 months. Po yun. Walang dapat na minis out. And you do quarterly strategy review. Yeah. So strategy review, strategy review at the start of the year. Dapat meron din dito. Uh, strategy review ng Q1. Okay? And this strategy review, sila din yung nag, nag, um, nag, during strategy review, dito na din pwedeng baguhin kung may adjustment tayo sa targets and sa measures. Uh, or sa mga programa, parang ganyan. But usually, when it comes to program, okay, madalas, um, konti na yung adjustment niya, in a, in a us usually po, ah, kasi, yearly basis naman yung APB natin, eh, di ba? Which is, ginagawa natin yun, year minus one. Okay? So, later on, mas mapapakita ko sa inyo, paano ninyo, the next lecture, paano ninyo i-link itong scorecard with your budget. Okay? Po. But in um, scorecard management, what, what you're expected is to implement your scorecard and then manage and monitor it through the conduct of program review and strategy review. Okay. So, dapat alam, ng, sina, alam lagi ng bawat personnel kung ano updated scorecard and ayun dapat lagi yung make sure ng GSMO na may updated scorecard. And ano yung performance ng Westcom vis-a-vis -vis your scorecard because you are expected to conduct this review. 